Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my channel Tasneem Madnesses. The video is the continuation of solving 2019 paper of O level subject Bangladesh Studies Paper 1, which is History and Culture. So, without making any delay, let's begin with the solving. Here is the paper on the screen. So, we will begin with question number 3 because we have already solved 2019 paper 1, question number 1 and question number 2. So, we will be solving question number 3 and question number 4 today. Here begins question number 3 with the title, The Mughal Period. So, from the title itself, you can actually understand that the question is based on topic 3 from our book, which is about the Mughal period or the Mughal dynasty. So you can see it's written the tomb of Isa Khan and here we have a picture of the tomb of Isa Khan and the and at the top and at the bottom of the picture it's written the fall of Mughal Empire. So like topic two, like question number two, we are also going to go through the whole paragraph line by line so that we can collect as much information we can from the paragraph. The mighty Mughal Empire lasted from 1520 to 1760 AD. So this is the ruling period that we have of the Mughal Empire 1520 to 1760 AD. Akbar saw the Mughal Empire extended into Bengal. So it was Akbar who actually wanted to extend the Mughal Empire into Bengal by defeating the Baraguians and Isa Khan's son. Shah Jahan focused on Assam, a task further developed by Mir Jumla as Viceroy. So after Bengal, it was Assam that was captured by Shah Jahan and during the Viceroyalty of Mir Jumla, most of the development took place in the entire Bengal. Yet enemies surrounded the Mughal conquerors. Assam and Arakan threatened the empire's borders. What were Mughal emperors to do? Ending expansions would be seen as a sign of weakness, so they continued to drive forward until they controlled land from Kabul to Chittagong and from Kashmir to the river Kaveri, and these extensions were done by Aurangzeb. In some ways, through, though expansion brought its own problems, especially as communication was slow, after Shah Jahan, Mughals did not have large enough families for their sons to represent them, whereas viceroys. So basically, it was actually the sons of the mughal empires who were selected to be the viceroy so that they could rule the respective areas okay but unfortunately they did not have enough sons who could who could rule the uh, different states as a viceroy so they were dependent on the uh, nobles or they were dependent on the external persons some viceroys ruled without their emperor's instructions which means they wanted to rule independently for example, from 1705, the Viceroy of Bengal, it was Moshid Kuli Khan, began to rule independently, establishing a trend that continued until the British arrived. So this was all the paragraphs, all the information that we came to know from the paragraphs. Now moving towards the question. Part A. This question tests your knowledge. Number one, name the son of Isa Khan who challenged the Mughals. It is Musa Khan. Which son did Shah Jahan appoint a viceroy of Bengal? The answer is Prince Suja. Three, which part of the empire did Muhammad Azam rule? The answer is Gujarat. Who succeeded Aurangzeb as ruler of the Mughal empire? The answer is Muazzam. Who was appointed viceroy of Bengal in 1705? The answer is Morshid Kuli Khan. Part B. This question tests your knowledge and understanding. So Roman 1. Describe the relationship between the Mughals and the Marathas. This is a 5 marks question. So you have to first write the answer in one paragraph. And you, you, also, have to make, you also have to point out that this is not a direct question. So you need to know you need to find out from where you'll be getting the question that is basically the test of your knowledge and then after finding out the relevant answer from the book you will be writing the answer in your own way that is the understanding part so this is basically how they judge your test knowledge as well as your understanding now as i mentioned earlier this question is not a straightforward question so you have to understand basically you have to know from where you will be getting the answers so we have to go to topic 3b 
and there is a title under topic 3b that is the third title which is tick and policy you have to collect as much information from this title and from the fifth title that is maratha revival so i will not tell you the answers for this question so i'll just tell you i'll just give you the hints that you will be writing for this question and you have to write the answer in your own way i'll only give you the hints which will be helping you to know from where we'll be getting the answer and what type of uh, answers sorry what type of information we will be collecting from those titles and how we are going to write them now coming to title uh, sorry now coming to title three that is tick and policy so under Deccan policy, it is clearly mentioned that the two states of Deccan, that is Golconda and Bijapur, they used to provide military and military training and employment to Marathas, due to which Aurangzeb had captured these two states of Deccan and came to be known as Deccan policy. So as Deccan, the states of Deccan were providing employment and military training to Marathas. Due to this, Aurangzeb have captured the two states of Deccan, that is Golconda and Bijapur. So now I hope you get an idea about the connection between the Mughal and the Marathas from here. So this is something that you have to include over here and tell the examiner what is the connection. On the same title, it is also mentioned that frequent Maratha raids became it difficult for the nobles to collect taxes. So raids of the Marathas was made it very difficult for the nobles to collect the taxes. This is the other hint that we can from where we get to know the relationship between Mughals and the Marathas. Okay, now moving to the fifth title that is Maratha Revival. It is mentioned that they grew stronger in northern and western India. So from the very beginning of topic 3, it is mentioned that Mughals, they have established their power or they have established the dynasty in northern India. Then during Akbar, they have uh, strengthened their power in northern and southern India. They have also extended towards Bengal, Assam. So these are the certain informations which actually tell us that the main capital or the main central organizations of Mughals were in northern India. Whereas over here it's mentioned Marathas grew stronger in northern and western India. So they grew stronger in northern India which means that they did not just become stronger. They became stronger which means they have taken some parts of northern India from the Mughals. So this, is also show, this also shows the relationship between the Mughals and the Marathas. There is another point mentioned under the Maratha revival that is they took up the role of defenders of Hindustan against foreign invaders so basically whenever there is any foreign invasion it is basically the main uh, government of the country to defend the foreign invaders so, but over here it is only mentioned the Marathas they became the they became basically the defenders so whereas it was supposed to be the Mughals but it is now the Marathas it's not again Mughal plus Marathas not together so this is also a point where we can see the relationship or where we can understand the relationship between the Mughals and the Marathas so I hope you have got you got have uh, you have gotten the idea about the points from where I have collected them and what are the points that I have taken out so that I can understand the relationship between the two groups. So you have to just implement these points in your answer and tell the examiner or show the examiner that you have a thorough knowledge about the topics. You know from where you are getting the answer and you can also write the question properly. So I'm not telling you the exact answer. I'm not reading out how will I be writing the answer. So if you want, you can write the answer and let me know in the comment section. It's up to you. Moving to next question, that is Roman 2. Explain how the Mughal Empire was administered in the 17th century. So here they are asking me about the administration of Mughal Empire in the 17th century. So you don't know exactly what is 17th century. So find out the year. 17th century means the year between 1600 to 1699. So these are the years that actually, that actually fully identifies 17th century. Okay, so... 
Now you have to tell the administrations of Mughal Empire in this 17th century. So how will you, from where will you write the answer? So you, you have to uh, go to topic 3b again and under topic 3b there is a part there is actually a part known as administrative weaknesses that is number seven title number seven tells you the administrative and weaknesses so this is something that this is actually the title that you have to focus on for this question so your question the answer to this question is title number seven of topic 3b that is administrative weaknesses where we have three points under this one is corrupt administration second is mansabdari system and the third one is condition of the people so the combination of these three titles in total the administrative weaknesses is the answer to this question so i hope you don't have any problem with this answer still if you want me to give you some hints so i can give you the hints over here where it is mentioned that corrupt administration so under corrupt administration you can see that officers of all ranks took bribes so this is something we're getting idea about the administration system that the officers are taking bribes then they were high rate of taxation there were high rate of taxation then the state demand have raised to half of the produce then they were there were actually uh, immense expenditure on the construction of architecture which worsened the condition of the finance so the financial condition was not actually that much good then uh, the mansabdari system it has the it, it was actually deteriorating because the month because basically came because uh, the mughal empire uh, the mughal emperors he used to directly uh, you know he was to directly recruit promote and suspend the emperor and suspend the uh, suspend the mansabdars by himself without actually giving a valid reason or recruiting without having a proper qualification and the conditions of the people they all have so they were actually suffering a lot for which you know uh, they have started a robbery so they were peasants they were peasants who actually formed bands of robbers so this is the entire administrative system of the mughal empire during the 17th century so you have this is a direct questions and it's a five marks question so you cannot take more than six to seven minutes to write this answer because it's also a direct question so you know the knowledge you know from where you are getting the question and you have to write the answers within uh, within six to seven minutes and it's not that you have to write each and every single line from the book or each and every single line from the title seven you will just combine all the three uh, subtopics or the subtitles of number seven and then write the answer so this is basically uh, your roman two answer so remember you have to just focus on the administrative system you have to show what was the administration going on okay I hope you can also write this answer now coming to part c this question test your knowledge sorry this question test your understanding and judgment so we have uh, two parts over here we'll be first going to roman one explain the importance of the following in weakening the rule of the mughals in the 17th century so we know that the mughal empire started to decline especially uh, in the 17th century that is from 1600 onwards the mughal dynasty started to decline because we all have all we have just went through the administrative system where we saw that the officers they all were taking bribes now let's see what are the two points given in the question british naval power and british trading ambition so for this answer you first have to understand the difference between the two titles one is british naval power british naval power basically means the coastline okay the protections which are given the, the coastline protections are basically given by the navels so what was the condition of the navels and what was the condition of the british naval power that is something that you have to understand and the other part is british trading ambitions what was their ambition okay how did they come into india so you have to understand the difference between these two point and then you have to know from where you will be writing the answer from and you will be writing the answer in your own way that is the understanding part so understanding part is basically room on one so before understanding you have to know from where you'll be writing the answer that is the knowledge part which is the answer you have to write from topic 3b the last title that is arrival of the british so you'll be writing the answer from the arrival of the british 
and then you will be go you will be uh, focusing on the main points that you have to write on then you'll be writing the answer in your own way so the answer we know the knowledge part now see the understanding part the understanding part is which is the one about the naval power and the other one is about the trading ambition so you'll be getting the answer both the both of the answers from top from uh, topic 3b number 10 title that is the arrival of the british so what is about the naval power the naval power is basically in under the arrival of the british it is mentioned that Mughals neglected the navy and coastline which helped the europeans to establish themselves in india so basically what is the naval power of the british you can get an idea from this line itself that is as the brit as the Mughals, they were they have neglected the navy and the coastline so it became easier for the british to enter into india so this is a hint that you can get from this line it's and apart then you have this British trading ambition so British trading ambition you can see you can get the idea from this line that dip, uh, through diplomacy and military skills English East India Company emerged successfully in India and Bengal and they built they actually built forts and conducted trade in Surat Agra Ahmedabad in 1620 so this is something also you can get the idea for what we have to write regarding the British trading ambition because trading basically means export and import so for which we have to have you know the factory over here and how did they actually become more uh, they started to become more ambitious so this is the ideas that i'm giving you you'll be writing the answer and then you can also say about uh this that they had they also took the license they were also successful enough in taking the license for Orangosa. so this is also a part of the trading ambition and there is also a part known as uh, there was also a t information given in 1688 where the british they have located the bombay and the mughal ports and captured many mughal ships so this is also a hint to the answer of british naval power so you have the hints of the of the two titles in the title under the title of arrival of the british period so you can write the answer so i have given you the knowledge i have also given you the hints that you have to focus on now it's your turn to write the answer coming to roman 2 which of this was more responsible for the growth of the british interest in bengal in the 17th century explain your answer so you have to choose anyone and then write the answer and remember the point that we are going to write in the body part you can repeat the answer and you have to give two valid reasons why you are choosing that particular point so it can be the british naval power it can be the british trading ambition so you have to choose either you have to choose anyone and you have to give a valid reason why you are choosing that without a copying of the body part i hope you have understood the answer so um if you actually ask me uh, which was more responsible for the growth of british interest in bengal in the 17th century so i'll actually choose the british uh, trading ambition because uh, because you know this british once they got actually they have they got the trade license so basically they got the trade license from Aurangzeb, which actually uh, legitimized the presence of the british which actually legitimized the right of the british that they can do trading anywhere in india and also they made a friendly relationship with the anti mughals in bengal which includes the raj which includes the Baruhuyans. so uh, this Baruhuyans and the Barovians, they made a friendly terms with the Barovians and they brought three zamindaries in Bengal, which includes uh, Kolikata, Sutanoti, and Govindapur. These informations are in topic 3C. So, these all together has actually helped them to form Calcutta, which became one of the most important uh, military zone or more one of the most important bases of the British. And apart from this, they were a country who were technologically advanced and who were also wealthy enough in the world so these actually helped the british to show their interest in bengal in the 17th century okay and apart from this bengal also held a huge number of wealth so, and they had a huge they also had a huge number of uh, local employees so these are the informations that you can focus on for this answer so i'm not going to give you a direct answer today so i'll just give you the hints and if you think that you need uh you want to write the answer and you want me to say that whether your answer is correct or not so you can mention me in the command box now moving to question number four that is 
from Pakistan to Bangladesh period. So the title is saying that this is from topic 5 of our textbook. Okay, so let's begin with the title and with the question. Results of the 1970 general election. So here is a table given to you with uh, the political party West, East and total. So West is basically West Pakistan, East is basically East Pakistan, that is present Bangladesh and total is the total number of seats for the National Assembly. So here we can see at the bottom of the table it's written total. Uh, for total it's written 300 so for the National Assembly there were supposed to be 300 seats and we have a couple of political parties who were nominated for the National Assembly for the, uh, for the election so we have AL which is Amalik then we have PPP which is Pakistan People's Party then we have PML other parties independents so from here we can see that Awami League have won 186, 160 seats but they did not get any seat from West Pakistan. All the seats they got from East Pakistan, that is in total of making up of 160. Pakistan People's Party, they received 81 vote or they received 81 seats. Then PML received 9 seats from West Pakistan. Other parties received 33 and 1, which makes them total 34. Independence received 15 plus 1, which makes them total 16. And total seats that we got from East West Pakistan is 138 so out of 138 seats West Pakistan received 81 seats and the highest is Pakistan People's Party out of 162 seats Awami League received 160 seats, um, 160 seats so the highest number of votes that we can see in total in the election is basically Awami League because they were the one who won the highest number of vote or highest number of six that is 160 out of 300. So this is a table given to you about the result of the general election for the uh, presidency election. Now moving towards the paragraph, events leading to the 1970 general election, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was arrested in January 1968. He was to be tried by a, a special tribunal, but this did not meet because of the opposition to the President Ayub Khan. So Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was arrested in January 1968. Why? We because of the Agartala conspiracy case. Because uh, because of the Agartala conspiracy case, he was arrested in 1968, and there was a special tribunal so that you know the so that Ayub Khan can basically pun, uh, punish him very quickly and so that there we have a halt of the six point movement but it did not happen because of the opposition to the president Ayub Khan so we had a couple of oppositions and who were those especially the students of Dhaka University they were the main opposition to president Ayub Khan the government response was to issue some measures so government has taken some measures. Students formed all party struggle council. In short, we can say SEC, Student Action Committee, to organize demonstration against the president. As discontent grew, so did support for there to be a demand day on 17 December 1968, which was called by Bhashani, Maulana Abdul Hamid Khan Bhashani. The curfew imposed in February 1969 did not help to calm the situation. So the, the curfew was imposed in February 1969 under the mass uprising process. The president made some changes, but he did not accept autonomy for East Pakistan. Though the president, he has, he has, uh, he made some changes, but still he did not accept the freedom of East Pakistan. He handed power to commander in chief of Pakistan's army on 25th March 1969. That is Ayub. That is Yaya Khan. So Ayub Khan had to resign and he had to hand over the power to Commander in Chief of Pakistan Army, who was Yaya Khan in 1969. So these are the all informations that we have taken from the paragraphs. Now let's move to the question. Part A. This question tests your knowledge. 1. What was Sheikh Mujibur Rahman accused of in January 1968? He was accused of trying to make East Pakistan or trying to separate East Pakistan from Pakistan with the help of India in Agartala. So this is the answer that you have to write that he was trying to separate East Pakistan from Pakistan with the help of Indian government in Agartala. Roman 2. What name was this case given? The name was Agartala conspiracy case. What was All Party Struggle Council better known as Student Action Committee in bracket SAC? 
Number four, who led the call for demand day? Maulana Abdul Hamid Khan Bhashani or you can also write Maulana Bhashani. Both are correct. Four, name the commander-in-chief of Pakistan army in March 1969. The answer is Yahya Khan. Now coming to part B. This question tests your knowledge and understanding. One, describe the changes that President Ayub Khan made in 1969. So this is the knowledge and understanding part. So if you don't know what happened in 1969, you will not be able to write the answer. So your knowledge is basically what happened in 1969. In 1969, we had mass uprising. So mass uprising took place in 1969. That is your knowledge and your understanding is what the changes that the government made. You have to take out from mass uprising. So government Ayub Khan, he has, or President Ayub Khan, he had, um, he had actually taken three steps or he uh, made three changes and the, those changes are number one first of all he has released Sheikh Mujibur Rahman on 22nd Feb 1969 secondly on the same date he has also closed the Agartala conspiracy case thirdly he has arranged a round table conference at Rawal Pindi where even Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was invited so that he can discuss all the political problems of the entire Pakistan and in that political and in that meeting or in that roundtable conference, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman he has proposed his six point and the eleven points of SEG, which Ayub Khan rejected and as a result the people of East Pakistan they have stopped producing they have stopped the production for which the economy of Pakistan fell and Ayub Khan was forced to resign and handed the power to the new handed over the power to commander in chief Yahya Khan so this is the answer you have to write for this part then coming to Roman 2 explain the outcome of the of the 1970 general election in Pakistan so you have to describe the outcome so this is a direct question given to you so you'll be going to the title of general election 1970 1971 and you'll be writing the answer from there so here you can mention about uh, about the promise that Yahya Khan made, then about the number of about the number of seats that was actually arranged that was actually as uh, excuse me you can mention about the number of seats for the national assembly you can mention the um the political parties that actually participated and who were the leaders of those political parties you can also take the information from the table given on the question paper at the beginning of the question so you can also take the help of the table and then you can answer the number of votes that that the political parties won as well as you can also mention that uh, who was the main winner of this political of this election so this are the information that you can directly get from the table given on the question paper itself as well as the information from the book under the title general election of 1970 1971 now coming to part c this question tests your understanding and judgment explain the importance of each of the following political events during 1970 1971 the freedom struggle and the world response to the freedom struggle so this is an eight mark question so you have four plus four now you have to give an uh, you have to give have to start the answer with an introduction which i'll be writing as the freedom struggle and the world response to the freedom struggle uh, both played an important role in the political both played an important role okay during 1970 and 1971 so i'll begin with the freedom struggle now freedom struggle this title is not directly given in the book so you have to know what is this title about so you will be getting the title in your book at the most probably on the second last page of the book that is under the title the war of liberation or the liberation war so the war of liberation or the liberation war this is the title given in the book where you will be getting the different uh, the full the full methods of the liberation war where we had this um we had the battalions then we have formed this we have formed the brigades k force s force z force we had this mukti bahini we had this mukti forge we had also collaborators so these all informations are given over there under the title most probably the war of liberation or liberation war so the other title of this is basically the freedom struggle or you can also say the resistance movement so these are the titles that we can give apart from the war of liberation or liberation war the freedom struggle and the resistance movement so this uh, you have the direct answer in the book i hope you can go through them you'll be getting the answers from from this title and you can write the answer 
now coming to the next part that is the world response to the freedom struggle so this is the last page of the book as well as the last page of topic 5 where we have the world's response that means how did the world actually respond to the liberation war which are the countries that have supported us and how did they support us and which are the countries who did not support us so these are the information that you are going to get from there for example India, Bhutan and some European countries some local people the local people of most of the countries they all have accepted they all were supporting uh, Bangladesh either through military training either through food Either, either financially either mentally so these are the supports that we actually got either through recognition and there were two countries mentioned in our book that they did not actually support us they did not want bangladesh to be an independent country so you have to answer you have to write this answer over here under this title the world response to the freedom struggle now coming to roman 2 which of this had the greater impact on the outcome of 1970-71 constitutional crisis explain your answer so we are talking about the outcome uh, greater impact on the outcome of 1970-71 constitutional crisis explain your answer so, so which of this do you think had a greater impact on the constitutional crisis on our uh according to you so i will say that so this is an opinion based question that is a judgment so you have to choose any one and you have to give two reasons why you are choosing that and you have to also make sure that you are not repeating the point so you can choose either one so if you ask me to choose then i will be choosing the freedom struggle because it was basically the freedom uh, for this freedom struggle we had to go through this government in exile or a provisional government was formed a government in exile a temporary government also known as government in exile was formed so that we can give a proper guideline to the war of liberation and this actually this freedom struggle has helped us to get our own independence and this freedom struggle has actually has also led to the world to know about the struggling that we are going that we were going through that is that east pakistan or bangladesh were going through and they wanted their independence for which most of the countries of the world they were actually bound to support us so and then we finally got our independence and that's and finally we got our independence finally there was a constitutional crisis and finally the pakistan was a uh, compelled to resign Oh, sorry compelled to surrender so this is what i will be saying from my own point of view though i'm not giving you the direct answer that i'm going to write i'm just giving you the hint so it's up to you how you will be writing your answer it's fully your opinion based because it's a judgment but you have to make sure that you are actually convincing the examiner that your answer is correct and the examiner should be convinced or the examiner should be in the point that to give you the mark okay so this is all about the questions and the full paper of 2019 so congratulations you have easily solved the latest exam paper that is 2019 of cie and i hope that you have understood the questions and you have also understood the answers you have you are now able to point out the answers from you're now able to point out from where you will be writing the answers and how you will be writing the answers especially the opinion part as well so and also the time management because each question contains 25 minutes and you have to answer within 30 minutes so try to get the answers on the spot while you read the questions so and it becomes easier for you to write the answers quickly as well as to maintain the time still if you have any questions or if you have any queries or if you want me to uh, let you know the answer so please let me know in the comment section That was all about paper 1 of 2019. I hope you all have understood. If you still have any queries, please let me know in the comment section. And if you do really do think that my this video was helpful and you have understood especially the time management as well, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel Tasneen Madnesses to like and share my videos as much as you can. And please let me know in the comment section how you liked it. So see you in the next video. Till then, stay home, stay safe, and stay healthy. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum.